Let's do the following experiment, and I installed over a hundred of these mirrors about a month ago. Now the same mirrors are located here, and each of these mirrors reflects the solar radiation into one of these spots. We see that the spots of all mirrors are trying to unite at this point. Now that point will be the location of a piece of newspaper, which we see here. It is obvious that the solar radiation from our mirrors quickly increases the temperature of the paper, and therefore it catches fire. Until now I have shown only well-known facts, and for example many people remember the legend of the ancient Greek Archimedes who used many mirrors to burn Roman ships more than 2000 years ago. This idea of Archimedes has evolved into this type of solar power plants with a lot of these mirrors which focus solar radiation at the top of the tower. Investors have already built several dozen such power plants and also more than a hundred solar power plants of this type, which will be described in more detail in three minutes. Unfortunately, these power plants give us more expensive electricity than a solar panel, but they can produce electricity at night just as well as during the day and have many other advantages over solar panels. Therefore, let's check the following three steps, which will significantly reduce the cost of electricity of such mirror systems to a level cheaper than electricity of thermal and nuclear power plants. These mirrors are very expensive with a total construction cost of several hundred dollars per square meter, but we can replace them with these mirrors, which are about 10 times cheaper. The beginning of this video already showed how these cheap mirrors can focus radiation, and this is an example of those cheap mirrors. We see that our mirrors will be fixed on the upper surface of similar concrete slabs, which are commonly used for garden paths, sidewalk, or covering large areas. A variety of companies produce concrete slabs that are durable and cheap, and technologies for their installation have been known for many years. Moreover, we can meet similar machines for automatic concrete slab laying. It is obvious that these machines drastically reduce the cost of installing concrete slabs and allow large areas to be covered with slabs quickly and efficiently. This is another example, where one slab is a place for several mirrors. It is very important to learn how to calculate the cost of thermal energy from our cheap mirrors, for example, as this formula does, which requires this cost of our solar heat have a cent per kilowatt hour. But it is about 10 times cheaper than heat from natural gas. This formula requires here that the total cost of manufacturing and installing our cheap mirrors should be $15 per square meter. This total cost seems realistic, because the cost of components for our concrete is approximately $2 per square meter, and the cost of different types of mirrors can be several dollars per square meter. We usually think that the main parts of such solar heaters are this mirror and this receiver, but here we see that they form only about 40% of the cost of a solar heater. At the same time, this half of its cost is formed by various devices and structures between the mirrors and the ground, but we get rid of this half of the cost if we replace them with our cheap earthen berm. It is interesting that the heavy weight of our concrete mirrors turns into an advantage, because our heavy mirrors cannot be moved by a hurricane. It is obvious that building our berms will be very cheap if someone makes a machine that will build an earthen berm and put our mirror slabs on it. I have to clarify that this earthen berm corresponds to 30 degrees north latitude, in other words, between the tropics and subtropics. This is a berm for a location 50 degrees north latitude, where my experiments are taking place. But I think that we have the right to reduce that angle by several tens of degrees, and I plan to do some experiments to test this idea and show them in future videos. The location near the equator allows us to abandon any earthen berm, and we can put our hair mirror slabs on the ground. Now I will quickly remind you how these solar power plants work. 
When the sun appears, its radiation heats thermal oil inside these receivers to temperatures of almost 400 degrees. This hot oil moves to the center of the solar plant, where its proportion produces steam for a turbine, which generates electricity. The rest of the oil comes to such heat storages, where the oil heats huge masses of substance to a temperature of almost 400 degrees and returns to the solar heaters at a temperature of 300 degrees. But the solar radiation will increase it again to 400 degrees. A few hours later, in the evening or at night, the hot substance of those heat storages will produce steam for the same turbine. Of course, our device also has some relative of this receiver, and it should be located here, at the focus point, and this is our receiver. I have shown how this receiver works in my previous videos, and will show in future. Now I will measure the temperature from Z100 mirrors, so that we can make sure that they can heat thermal oil up to 300 or 400 degrees, similar to those solar power plants. We see here that solar radiation from my mirrors can heat the surface of my receiver to temperatures higher than 400 degrees Celsius. This temperature or the receiver efficiency will be drastically greater if this black surface is covered with glass and this black paint is replaced with a selective coating, similar to these well-known solar collectors. We know the sun is constantly moving across the sky and therefore those expensive mirror systems must constantly move to accompany the sun. At the same time, we well understand that our heavy mirrors will always be motionless, but we can move our receiver according to the movements of the sun across the sky. That is why let's do the following experiment, and we see that I have closed all the mirrors except for this one mirror, and its solar radiation forms this spot. It is morning, and this appoints in time of one day on the 19th of June. We see that this spot moves approximately in a straight horizontal line from morning to evening. That is why we understand that our receiver should move approximately in this way, when this is the location of the receiver in the morning, this is the middle of the day, and this is its location in the evening. It is obvious that our mirrors must form such long rows, according to the rules which are shown by me in this primitive example. Here we see several receivers of one shot row, and for example this receiver is the focus point of the solar radiation of these mirrors, but it is obvious that there must be several hundred mirrors here, and this width should be several meters. But we know that the height of the sun changes between low sun in winter and high sun in summer. That is why we have to sometimes do such actions, and let's look at one of the examples where we have to do these actions 12 times in a year. Now I am showing the position of the receiver around the summer solstice, but August will require us to change the position of the receiver in this way. After that we change the position 5 times like this, and therefore reach this position around the winter solstice. Starting from February we are changing everything in the opposite direction, and therefore we take these 6 steps to return to this position around the summer solstice. Here we see very cheap but reliable devices for changing the position of my receiver, and I remind you that this is a simple and quick action. Of course, we must hire workers for these actions, but their salaries make up a very small share of these operating costs. This is another example of our receiver supports, and these are those cheap and reliable devices for changing the position of the receiver. Now I will show an example of changing the position of the receivers 12 times a year. This is the position in June, and then we take these 6 steps and reach this position in December, and after that we take 6 steps in the opposite direction until the summer solstice. I expect such disadvantages as the accumulation of dirt on the surface of the mirrors, and a variety of grass on the edges of a mirror pass and between slabs. That is why our solar power plants need similar machines, which will remove the dirt and grass. Also, let's look at my next experiment, where I closed all the mirrors, except these 12 mirrors. 
The vastest line is here and we see solar radiation from those 12 mirrors here. These are points in time of one day from morning to evening. Now it is the middle of the day and we see that this path of all the mirrors are located in one place, but the farther from the noon the more the focus of my mirrors is destroyed. Now it is morning and we see that the focus is very poor, but the approach of the noon improves the focus. Conclusions from this experiment must be drawn with caution, because I repeat that this berm is to be used at 30 degrees north latitude, while I am at 50 degrees. That focus destruction is the chief cause why a square meter of our chief mirrors will produce several times less energy than a square meter of these expensive mirrors, but our square meter will be about 10 times cheaper. Now I am showing the same and pay you attention that these devices do not change the positions while the white screen moves from west to east. Let's calculate how much solar energy is directed by our mirrors into our future receiver, which will occupy this area that is 40 times less than the total area of all my mirrors. We must count the number of the spots which are inside the rectangle and we must take into account the cosine of the incidence angles and other factors. This experiment proves approximately this power of solar energy which is directed by our mirrors into that rectangle at different times of a completely sunny day from morning to evening. This graph allows us to calculate that each square meter of our mirror directs approximately 3 kilowatt hours of solar energy into the receiver during 10 hours of one absolutely sunny day. But unfortunately, almost half of this energy will be lost due to heat leakages and the absorption coefficient of our receiver. That is why these 3 kilowatt hours of solar energy will turn into less than 2 kilowatt hours of useful thermal energy per square meter, and this fact corresponds to this annual energy production in our formula. Pay attention to this sheet and how the spots from my 12 mirrors change here. Now the sheet gradually covers the vertical columns of my mirrors and then it gradually opens the vertical columns and here we see changes in the spots. This was the situation one and a half hours after the geographic noon and now there is a situation one hour later. Videos like this allow us to establish links between the mirrors and the spots and allow us to count the number of the spots inside that rectangle. Now we have the situation 4 hours after the geographic noon and we see that the spots from the western mirrors will not get inside our future receiver. At the same time, these spots from the east mirrors will still be inside the receiver. Now I am trying to show the same but in the morning and we see what happens in reverse and the western mirrors direct this solar radiation into our future receiver. At the same time, this radiation from the eastern mirrors will be far from the receiver.